sounds of the ancient taiko drum, once featured on the battlefield, are now helping to commemorate the art of the samurai. Japanese composer Kota Nakamura included those and some unconventional instruments to his experimental outdoor symphony. The musical experience is an extra dimension to the extensive samurai collection at Pointe Carrier, a museum in Montreal. Well, when you come to the exhibition, first thing you see is uh, a lot of armors, spears, swords. And then uh, you will see different art forms like tea ceremony, uh, the, the way of incense and calligraphy, some of the most delicate and very subtle and very peaceful art forms uh, surrounding that old the military collection, very violent and powerful items. So I thought this was very uh, interesting to see this sharp contrast in the space exhibition. So I thought maybe this can uh, be portrayed in the symphony. I can use this idea of sharp contrast, maybe different sound object. Um, so that was uh, my uh, inspiration. What he came up with was a 30-minute composition requiring a team of musicians on the stage, plus additional musicians out in the waters nearby. So tell me about Sibidium. First part is going to be by uh, musicians on the stage, actual musicians, music instruments. And the last part of the piece is going to be by boats uh, that are moored in port, the five or six boats, and also the couple of trains. Outdoor symphonies are an annual tradition for the museum. Each year, the diversely themed shows include a mix of urban instruments from Montreal's old port. What was it like uh, composing a piece using boats and things like that that are sort of unpredictable? It's just something I never <laughs> used as instruments. And I actually had to go onto the boats, uh, make sounds. Unlike the usual instruments, uh, there are some delays. When you make actions on the liver or uh, press button on the boats, the sound comes out Com, uh, you know, uh, like a second later, a few seconds later. So those are the challenging part and that's something I have to know. So the process of composing was constantly, we, uh, I was in touch with musical advisor and coordinator and also the manager of this project. Uh, I say, is this possible? Can I do this? And then they would say, no, this, uh, this cannot happen. You have to change it. So constantly I was in touch with them. Anytime I have some ideas, uh, the inspiration is always different from it can be a person uh, meeting someone special or seeing some special uh, exhibition or uh, just walking on the street. Maybe you hear something, you see something, um, or maybe you say something and then like it just gives you some idea. Why did you become a composer? What was what started all this process for you? My first instrument was piano. I was probably two, three years old. My parents uh, forced me to take piano lessons. I, at that time, I didn't know that I could say no. <laughs> so uh, I was probably around nine years old. Uh, my parents took me to this concert. Uh, the concert was by the huge Japanese drum it's called Taiko Ensemble Concert because my hometown is a very, uh, we have a big scene on this Japanese classical or traditional percussion. My parents took me to this concert and I was shocked and I got very excited and I uh, told them I want to be part of this. So I joined this uh, drum club, uh, the Taiko Ensemble, and then I uh, moved to Boston and I knew I wanted to do music uh, for my career at that time, but I didn't know what performer or conductor or composer or uh, theorist or music history, uh, music history. And there I met uh, this conductor, uh, composer, uh, Hungarian composer and conductor, uh, Tibor Pusta, his name. And uh, he actually told me to compose music without uh, giving me why reasons. He just told me, Kota, start composing. So since then, uh, I just uh, haven't uh, stopped writing music. 